cats and kittens. I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop and I'm back with another kitchen counter thrift haul. And as if you couldn't already tell, we are stuck. Oh, somewhere between 1955 and 1965 for the most part. It's another mid-century thrift haul. So stay tuned. Okay, everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well wherever you are and whatever you're up to today. It's late on Saturday afternoon. It's overcast here on the East Coast. We're in for some unsettled weather, which means a rainy Sunday. So I thought I would bring this video to you tonight on Saturday. Now, everything that you see on the counter is going to be for sale in the old Curiosity Shop, and it will all be listed by the end of business on Monday, August the 17th. Now it's all going to run for seven day auction and again this is Saturday. I'm not going to have it all listed until the end of the day on Monday August the 17th. So I hope you'll come back and check out the old Curiosity Shop and even if you don't you don't have to buy anything. I just hope you'll sit back and take a look at these wonderful things from not so long ago but it should jog some memories for many of you and especially those who like mid-century. Now I admit, because I haven't listed any of this stuff yet, I haven't done a lot of research, and you know me, I love 1920s, 30s, and 40s, and I have a decent amount of knowledge of items made in that era. When it gets to the 50s and 60s, I really can recognize the mid-century design, but I am certainly not up on the makes and the models and the so forth and so on. So I'm going to need your help on some of these items because I'm not sure who the makers were. But we can really tell by the color palette that we have here. We're definitely talking about after the Second World War, all those Depression era colors are gone, right? We don't see anything that reminds us of the dreary 30s and 40s. We see modern colors and modern design for modern living. I'm going to start with what really has me stumped in the front. I have no idea what's going on here, so you guys are going to have to help me out with this. Alright, so what has me stumped with these little guys is, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Now, in the front, there's no doubt, we've got salt and pepper. Okay? Holes on the top of the heads, salt and pepper. And these are one of these Japanese... Uh, American companies but made for export out of Japan. Fine quality, I think it says Lego, L-E-G-O, Japan. Okay. Uh, now, I remember Lego my ego, but, uh, so, salt and pepper shakers, no doubt, really cute. And obviously they match these two guys behind us, so if we pull these forward, my thought is salt and pepper shakers, these must be egg cups just part of a breakfast set and you know we're just missing uh, the rest of the breakfast set but if we take one of the hats off it looks a little big for an egg mm. it certainly doesn't stand this way there again is the well maybe it's Lesco instead of Lego I can't read that and then there's a date in there that appears to be 1950 Oh, maybe you guys can make that out. 1950-something. So if they're not egg cups, what are they? Well, when you turn the hats upside down, they say ashes. And there's the little indentation for the cigarette to rest on. So did you turn the hats upside down, put them back on the heads, Use these as ashtrays, and then when you're done, did you dump your ashes inside and then put the hat back on? Now, what are you going to do with salt and pepper shakers while you're smoking? Wait a minute, are you supposed to eat hard-boiled eggs on your egg cups, sprinkle them with a little salt and pepper, 
and then sit back and smoke a cigarette. I'm really confused, <laughs> but maybe you can help me out on that. That one says ashes too, although it's partially worn off. So we're something weird is going on here with eggs, cigarettes, and salt and pepper. I'm leaving it right there. Instant coffee. This little thing is adorable. Look at the coffee pot on the top as part of the lid. Now you guys know I'm weird. I drink instant coffee. I love it. Of course, I love percolated coffee too. So why am I not keeping this? Well, it's mid-century and it doesn't really fit in with my uh, passion of uh, collecting area. So I love the lid. Obviously, this, there's nothing, the spout is not open because you keep your instant coffee in there. And here's another one of the Japan pieces, another one of the co many companies that were making items in Japan and shipping them to the U.S. after the war. Instant coffee uh, certainly was around in the 1950s because, uh, do you remember the Goldbergs television show? Now, of course, that's way before my time. But uh, my mother used to watch it when she was a girl, and she was o she was always imitating Mrs. Goldberg, Mrs. Goldberg. Hello, Mrs. Goldberg. I, hello. I, I don't know. Hello is such a little word for such a big feeling. I, I, I want to say hello to you with all with all the letters in the alphabet. Why am I saying that? Her sponsor was Sanka Instant Coffee, <laughs> and that show was on in the fifties. A lot of you remember it. Uh, I saw a documentary on um, the actress who played Mrs. Goldberg. Now, it's, isn't that awful? Something Berg. Very talented actress. Here is a percolator for your stove top. Very atomic name on the bottom of it. We have to see that. Comet. Can you see it? There it is. Isn't that wonderful? The popular aluminum. All right, so this is all set. You can percolate right on your stove top. And it's got the uh, basket on the inside and everything. I love that. It's all cleaned and ready to go for you. So if you just want to percolate on your stove top, you're set. Now some mid-century glass. I don't know much about these swing bases. Again, I don't have any books on them, but I know L.E. Smith and of course Viking made a lot of them and there are many other companies. So I'm in the shop and I pick up this purple one, which is beautiful, and I always make sure that they're not sick. It's not sick glass if there are, uh, if there's calcium deposits on the inside, you're in trouble. Now that brings up a topic, which I'm not going to discuss in detail today, but I've been asked a lot about what's the difference between sick glass that you can actually clean and sick glass that is damaged beyond repair. There is a difference. Some of it you can clean, and some of it you can't. Period. I'm going to talk about that in another video, but this cleaned up beautifully. There's no cloudiness in it. An amethyst vase. And the lady at that store likes me, and she said, Stand right here. I got another one in the back. I'm going to bring out for you. I said, Okay. Well, I'll wait. She comes out with this big thing over here. I said, What am I going to do with that thing? It's probably... Oh my goodness, it's mm, almost, well, not quite two feet tall, but it's getting there. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't say no. It's in beautiful condition. I could stick my arm in there. Oh, it must weigh 12 pounds. Let's get it out of here and uh, stand it up and let you see it all. Well, there it is. It's a big one. Uh, it's going to take a pretty big box and it won't be cheap to ship, but I'll ship it. A really nice mid-century swung vase and uh, let's set it down before I drop it on this counter. I couldn't believe it when she came out of the back with that thing and uh, I hope the blue color shows up well for you to see it. This I just bought yesterday. I don't know who made it. It's bugging me because I this particular form I think I've seen before might be maybe several companies not sure how well this sort of teal color shows up, but it's again, it's one of those sort of 60s blue colors, and it's kind of pebbled with sand here. The only thing on the, on the bottom of it is the letter J, the number 30, and USA. Anybody know 
who made this? Very mid-century. Um, I'm guessing it's a decorative vase and not meant to be actually used to pour liquids out of. Another mid-century piece of glass would be this one right here. I don't know what you call it. I know those are swung vases, because the swung vases have been around since just after the turn of the century. The carnival glass folks were making them. But this thing here is very 60s, right? Very, very typical blue color. Reminds me of the Capri... Uh, well, no, not quite the Capri blue. Uh, well, anyway, scratch that. Good condition. Could do a lot with that. Here's a wonderful... Oops, oops. Here is a wonderful nautical tea set. This thing looks like it's from a Disney film and uh, that it could just come to life in the middle of the night and start singing 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Was there a song with that movie? I don't think so. But look at this. Even the little seahorses for the handles on the tops. You see that? And up there too. Now it's unmarked so I'm not sure if the Hall Company uh, made this. But it's just outstanding, and there's no damage on any of it. You see, there's absolutely nothing on the bottom, but here's the creamer. I guess you call this a, nau a nautilus shell. And here's the uh, sugar over here with the little seahorse on the top. And then the big pot back here, which is just <laughs> fantastic. The spout is perfect. It's clean on the inside. I'll let you see the bottom, which has nothing on it. I don't even see... Well, you gotta really look closely and squint your eyes to see any crazing. Um, no stains at all. Again, perfect condition. I love it. This also, I mean, my goodness, can you get any more 50s than that? The pink and the black and this modern design. We'll also take this lid off. I'm really being a bull in a china store today, aren't I? And we'll let you see this one is Hall, H-U-L-L. -L. And then it says copyright 1955. You see that right there? The C and the 55. So right there in the mid 50s. So this set over here might be Hall as well. I don't know. Who knows? I think I might have that on backward. Well, no. It's... All right, let's... Okay. All right, let's just be done with it. Beautiful. Excellent condition. No chips, no cracks. Another set back here made by the... Pearl China Company. Again, excellent condition, no chips, no cracks, no loss to the gilding. Turkey, uh, turkey. Why did I say turkey? I need to sit down. Coffee pot. <laughs> turkey pot? Coffee pot, lid, cream and sugar. Very, very, I mean, I expect, who do I expect to walk in here right now? Somebody from Bewitched, I guess, or I Dream of Genie. Uh, the Pearl China Company, and it is marked on the bottom, but we won't pick it up. You've seen these many times. I had one a couple months ago I sold. This one is in even better condition. It's made in Japan. It's from the 60s. It is a pink sewing basket. A little bit of water damage. Somebody spilled something on the inside, but it doesn't smell, and it's not sticky. Uh, if you're like my mother, you received one of these as a teenager, There we go, made in Japan. 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. And back here, I love these, especially that one. Four little plastic tumblers, and this particular set is... Oh, wait a minute, I don't know why I'm having uh, so many issues with the lighting. Let's get it. There we are, Riff Riff Raff, 
Raffia. Raffia wear thermotemp glasses or, you know, tumblers in plastic. These are nice and clean. I don't know if they, if there might have been a set of six or there might have been two more, maybe a blue and like a yellow, but I have those four in excellent condition. Here are, I was thrilled to find these because this is referred to as uh, confetti, these bowls. And they're usually solid colors. Uh, Boonton Ware is who made many of them. The Malmec, now let's turn this one over, and this one looks like uh, Malmac. This just says Malmac dinnerware on it. It is Boonton Ware, Boonton Molding Company, and that was Boonton, uh, New Jersey, which is up in North Jersey. And the particular color on this is called, they call these confetti. Now that one is sort of looks like uh, granite ware, a little bit. I'll put you down. And then here's another one that's upside down. Big mixing bowl, also in that confetti style, with a little bit of molding, really nice. And this is going to be that mid-century Boonton wear as well, which I believe you can see right there. Uh, some of these sell for 30, 40. I, I, I just. I guess I need to really go sit down and have a ginger snap because I'm gonna break something. You've never seen me be so clumsy before. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, there they go. I don't know what I was gonna say. I lost my train of thought. And then finally, well, no, not finally. A gravy boat, 1960s Japan, probably. Or a gravy separator. No drip gravy separator. I love the vegetables on there. Very whimsical for your mid-century kitchen. You can even hang it on the wall and let it drip dry. And let me hold on before I go breaking something else. Kick me out of the store. Back here, look at this. Uh, I just bought this as well and I think that it is brand new unused. Who do you think made it? Pyrex? No, it was actually made by Anchor Hawking, and it is a Fire King casserole. And it is a divided casserole. We can see there it's marked Fire King on the bottom. I'm not going to pick it up. Wonderful. Mid-century, standing on its metal rack. It has its little rubber handles and a place down here to put a, uh, a candle. There you see there. So you can keep your tuna noodle casserole nice and warm. What would you put in this thing? What would you serve in this sort of circa 1960 uh, serving dish? What do you call it? A chafing dish when you put a candle under it to keep it warm or just a warmer? And of course, being oven glass, you take this right out of the oven and stick it right here in this rack. And it's super clean. There are no, there's no rust on it. It's not bent. Now, I know it's just plain glass. It doesn't quite have the panage of old Pyrex. But, you know, listen, we can't all be soloists. Some of us have to be members of the chorus. I mean, you know, you don't want every piece of dishware to take away from the uh, main course. So... Not terribly colorful, but a wonderful design. I love the stars in here. And uh, I would really like to know what would you serve at your vintage dinner party um, in that thing. Let me put the sewing basket back. Bring this back. Whew! I need to go sit down. I can't believe I got through that without breaking anything. Well, I had a lot of fun putting together all this 1950s and 60s stuff. Hey, if you know who made any of these things, or if I made any mistakes, let me know, because I'm going to be busy on Monday writing up the descriptions, taking the photographs, and getting it all listed in the old curiosity shop. So you have yourselves a groovy weekend, whatever it is you're going to do for the rest of today on Saturday. And I'll see you next time. I'm Scott. From the old curiosity shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.